I am deeply conscious of the great responsibility all of you have placed on me yet again. Thank you. Uh, let me, first of all, greet and congratulate all the newly elected Lok Sabha members of parliament. You have fought a tough election. Under the most challenging of circumstances, you have surmounted many obstacles and campaigned so very effectively. Your success has given us a much, much greater presence in the Lok Sabha and a more effective voice in its proceeding, both of which will help give greater strength to our participation. The Indian National Congress has once again demonstrated its resilience. It was up against a mighty and malevolent machine that was doing its utmost to destroy us. It tried to cripple us financially it carried out a campaign against us and our leaders that was full of lies and defamation. Many wrote our obituaries, but under the deter determined leadership of Kargeji, we persevered. He is an inspiration to us all. His commitment to the party organization and its ideology is truly extraordinary, and we all have to learn from his example. The Bharat Joro Yatra and the Bharat Joro Nyaya Yatra were historic movements which rejuvenated our party at all levels. Rahul deserves special thanks for his tenacity and determination to fight on in the face of unprecedented personal and political attacks. He shaped our narrative, he also shaped our narrative on guarantees and on the protection of the Constitution very sharply. And it is my personal belief that the constant upholding of the importance of our Constitution during our uh, campaigns by Rahulji, Kargiji, and all of you is that which compelled the Prime Minister yesterday to bow down literally to that, to, to that which is for us a precious book, the Constitution, containing the Constitution of India. The CWC resolution passed yesterday has, not earlier today, sorry, there's a mistake here, has also thanked all of you, all of our colleagues and workers across the country who worked, and they too, worked very hard and so very diligently for our success. On your behalf, I wish to reiterate that sentiment strongly. Lacks of workers in both rural and urban areas have stood by the party in the most difficult of times. We salute. We salute their courage and commitment. We owe them a debt of gratitude. Ours has also been a campaign where we have functioned truly as a collective. To those of our colleagues who contested the election but lost, I extend our full support and tell them that they fought valiantly and did our party proud. Our numbers in Parliament have increased significantly. 
Not only is the Indian National Congress a large contingent in the Lok Sabha, but we are bolstered by the strength of our India partners, some of whom have themselves come back impressively. Yet, as we celebrate our recovery, we must also reflect what, need, what we need to do to improve our position in states where our performance has been far below our expectation. The Congress President spoke about this earlier in the day at the CWC, and I wish to reinforce his plea. The Prime Minister, who sought, sought the mandate solely in his name to the exclusion of both his party and its allies, has suffered a political and worse, a moral defeat. In reality, he has lost the mandate he sought and thereby lost the right to leadership as well. Yet, far from taking responsibility for failure, he intends to get himself sworn, sworn in again tomorrow. We do not expect him to change the substance and style of his governance, nor take cognizance of the will of the people. That is why, as <coughs> members of CPP, we have a special, special obligation to be watchful, vigilant, and proactive in holding him and his new NDA government accountable. No longer can and, the, and should Parliament be bulldozed like it has been for a decade now. No longer will the writ of the ruling establishment be permitted to disrupt Parliament whimsically, mistreat members, or push through legislation without due and proper consideration and debate. No longer can and should parliamentary committees be ignored or bypassed like they have been since 2014. No longer will parliament be muscled and stifled as it has been over the past 10 years. We have challenging times ahead. We have to be alert, prevent any attempt to increase polarization and erosion of secular and democratic values. So this is a renewed opportunity for us as a party that established parliamentary democracy in our country to bring parliamentary politics back on track to where they legitimately belong. In this election, the people have voted decisively to reject the politics of divisiveness and authoritarianism. They have voted to strengthen parliamentary politics and safeguard our constitution. They have voted for the agenda of economic and social justice that indeed should continue to be our objective and guide. Friends, this is a very emotional moment for me, for us all, especially the newly elected members of parliament. All I have to say is that I have received so much love and affection from you. So let me close by the assurance to you all that I will do my best and more to fulfill the trust and confidence you have continued to place on me. Thank you, Jack.